Next up on the show, we have a JRA, Japan Racing Association, sponsored segment. And to do that with me, we have representing the JRA via his home base of Woodbine, Klaus Ebner. Klaus, what's going on? Hey, Pete. How you doing? Things are good. I want to talk about the big race going on Saturday night into Sunday morning. But before we get to that, I think it's uh, only appropriate we get a little bit of an update on the Japanese runners who are going to be pointed to the Kentucky Derby. We saw Derma Sotogake and continue our work the other day. And there's been a lot of chatter about this on social media. The, we'll get to that. The other news, you tell me, but uh, as defections continue, are we in a situation where Mandarin Hero might be able to run in this race? Has he been ruled out by connections? What What's the latest on Mandarin Hero? Well, I know he's actually he actually arrived at Churchill Downs yesterday, I believe. So, okay. I think the connect the the connection sort of saw the defections happening, and they said, "Hey, we actually have a shot." So, you know, I know I know they're based at Santinita there. So, I think their I think the plan is for them is that should there be any sort of last minute defections this week, they're going to breeze them in the, in the hopes that he can get in, and then you know, hopefully crossing fingers. Again, yeah, he don't want to say crossing fingers because it's just one of those things where. You know, especially where where Skinner got him yesterday with uh, unfortunate passing yeah. of the horse. No one ever wants to hear that or see that in our industry. Um, right. But you know, should anything happen to any, any of their horses above him, I, I think that their, their their goal is to run him. Interesting. That's very interesting. So yeah, he. I mean, because he comes out of that race, we had a long conversation about it on the pro player. Uh, round table that we did last night about that Santa Anita Derby figure. But, you know, you, you, you could, the, the, it's not too hard to, to make a case if that race was as fast as a lot of people have it, that, that he could be going there with a, with a big chance as well. Now, here's a cheeky way of asking this question. After the Derma Sotogake continue our work, is there a chance continue our might be a horse who does d- decides not to make the Derby? I, I, um, I, I didn't think he looked nearly as good as I, I'd seen him look before in that in that work. Uh, am I misinterpreting things? How, what did you think of it? Yeah, I I, I just I think so. So what's going to happen is just so, so everyone's aware of how they kind of do it in Japan. They're probably going to have another blowout, I believe, uh, this upcoming Wednesday before the race. So that was sort of like you know, hey, get the cobwebs out more than anything else. So everyone needs to understand how they do it in Japan. So. You know, I, I I understand the kind of trepidation about everyone seeing that continue our work and being like, wow, this horse is not belonging in the race, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I just think it's an over overreaction in my opinion. Okay. Uh, I think, you know what, let's let's see how he, he turns out in his next next work. I think we can all agree Derma Sodagaki had Derma had a pretty pretty good work. You know, it was at least allowed him to stretch his stretch out. He galloped out pretty well. Everyone was kind of like, hey, you know what? Yeah, this is a horse that's going in the right direction, and we all understand that. And I think we knew with him being one of the contenders in the race, that's probably you know what he would do. But I think the challenge we have with that too is just there's they're two different horses, right? They're two different horses in terms of running style. Dermot Sotogake had to have a target, and that had to be Continuar. Continuar has zero turn of foot. He's the he's as I mentioned before, he is a grinder. That's what he does. He just has no turn of foot at all, so he will just grind away. And yeah, his 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 work mate bested him that day in terms of Dermot Sotogake, and he did not gallop out very well in terms of Continuar. So. You know, like I said, let's just kind of leave the whole armchair quarterbacking, at least in my opinion, everyone's entitled to their opinions, but let's just leave the armchair quarterbacking until we see what Continuar does this week on the track. And yeah, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that Trader Yohagi is one of the best in the world in terms of targeting races. He knows what he's doing. He did it with Marsh Lorraine, the British Cup distaff at long odds. So let's kind of see how he how he comes out of his work this week. And yeah, if, if things aren't right, they definitely aren't going to run their horse if, if he has no shot or if he's not training or, or, or doing well this week. So, uh, again, I, I just think everyone needs to be, you know, I'm not saying, like, you know, calm down, but it's just, you know, let's just, let's just. <laughs> it's okay, the, you can tell me to calm temper. down. I, I probably, <laughs> I, I, I'm not immune. You know, look, I watch horses work from time to time. Yes. But, yes. you know, I'm still, a, I'm a dilettante. And then you get other people who I think only look at workouts at this time of year giving opinions as if this is something they know about. It's it's a funny thing because, you know, I think there are very valid reasons why everyone tries to become a workout expert at this time of year. The workouts, I really do believe, are more important leading into a race like this because of the distance questions, because of the very specific condition questions. But that doesn't mean we necessarily know what we're talking about um, at, at all. Um, and even if you do know what you're talking about, it's one data point in a sea of data points. But I am interested in something you said about the shaking out the cobwebs, specifically regarding 
the derma sodagake part of the work because it did seem like he took a little bit I wasn't sure if he wasn't I, – I watched at different times and had different opinions different times if he was not really being asked early or if he simply wasn't responding early. But I felt like there was no doubt in those last three furlongs he looked very, very good. And maybe some of the the you know negative buzz on Continuar is really reflective of how good Derma Sotogake looked because there is a reading of the figures and form of the Japanese horses where Derma is several lengths better than, than the other two. And maybe that's just what we're seeing in the workout. So I'd love for you to comment on what you saw from the Derma side of things the other day. Yeah, I, I just think it for me, it showed a horse who is right now on his game. Uh, it is hopefully peaking at the right time. And the fact the, the thing I liked the most about that workout P was the fact that it showed that Derma has a turn of foot, right? Like he, he inhaled Continuar pretty quickly. And yeah, everyone can judge Continuar on, on a face value in terms of what it looked like from his point of view. But still, you know, he's still a quality horse in, ter- in terms of Continuar. And he needed a target. He inhaled the target pretty quickly on the turn and then accelerated uh, after that. And yes, people can say, well, you know, it wasn't handily. It was more being asked for Derma sort of guy. And I just said, listen, uh, they've, that's their style. And, and what I can say too on that point, Pete, is just about the whole, you know, it doesn't look right or they're, they're not doing things right is let's also put in a frame of reference of this is Japanese trainers doing things their way on foreign soil uh, to the best of their ability. They would have, you know, you, you know, these horses would usually be at a training center in Japan with multiple facilities for them to use. But again, they're at Churchill Downs with only the racetrack to use as, as a kind of a, a training area, if you will. So these methods and, and, you know, training, training styles they're going to use are all very different in what's, what, what works for them as trainers in Japan, as opposed to what we're accustomed to in North America here with, you know, three, four, five furlong breezes or, 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 you know, gallops at the same time. So, uh, like I said before, let's just take it all with a kind of grain of salt, understand that, you know, listen, because it's not what we're used to in North America, does not make it wrong. And because of course, you know, like, part expression but ass does not necessarily mean the horse is doing you know, badly it's just a case of you know the trainer may have a certain you know routine or method in mind for that certain horse and let's just see how the horse comes up to the race next week and like i said if, if things go sideways for continue R and he, he looks like you know he, he has, has no shot i am certain the contextions will say let's you know what we're gonna pull the plug and, and you know, maybe aim for the preakness or belmont or whatever it may be so with the success that the Japanese runners have had around the world doing this type of thing, competing on foreign soil, to question them, I, I think, is questioning Warren Buffett's investment strategy at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I said, it, it, it's, you know, the, the end goal is everyone's trying to get to the race in peak fitness, but everyone's doing it a different way. And that's, that's how you look at it. So. Yeah. And the body of work just speaks for itself. All right. That's not the only thing we have you here to talk about. We do have the Tenno show happening on uh, Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, looks like uh, some very familiar names turning up in this spot. Curious to know what you think the main storylines are coming in. If you have an idea of a, of a wager you might be placing. Yeah. So, so for me, this is really, you know, if we're looking at the, the race on a whole, uh, again, this is sorry, speed. This is the Tenno Show, show Spring Mile, a two mile race in Japan. This is the first of two Tenno shows. So they have the spring one here uh, at the newly renovated Kyoto. So we haven't been at Kyoto for over a year now as they've gone through, I think it was $800 million in renovations to the racetrack. It's a beautiful racetrack. You know, I, I've been there before, prior to the renovations. Uh, it's one of my favorite racetracks in the world. Uh, it's very nice. It's very beautiful in my area that it's in in, in, in Kyoto. So um, again, if anyone ever has a chance to get there, I would strongly suggest that that be one of their racetracks to hit. Uh, but really, for me, this is a case of the, a showdown between uh, the four and the five-year-olds uh, in this race. I, I, I'm looking at the, the race itself. I think that's a. I really can make a case for only about four to five horses in here that really have a, a chance. And the, and the one that's really taking all the money and attention here is Title Holder. Now, Title Holder, for those that kind of don't remember last year, uh, Title Holder was really you know the, the kind of big horse uh him and uh and euphoria last year coming into the year were the, were the two that everyone was looking at uh it, you know if Tyler holder came in here to this event uh last year when it was run at hanshin uh he won that year he won this race last year at hanshin came back to win the takara and then after that you know was the unfortunately the, the, the failed arc attempt where he tried to you know, make the running all the way in the arc but that was just a bog that day and he just didn't want any part of that 
you know, he, he came back and yeah, he ran his race in the Arena Keenan, but you know, he finished, uh, I'm not going to say respectable ninth, but it was kind of up the track ninth at the, in, the, in the Arena Keenan. And I really think that was kind of a, you know, the leftover effects from them doing the ship out to France and then the ship back and, you know, him just not being himself anymore. But, you know, what PD, he really stamped himself as, you know, one to watch at least to show that he's back to his old self in that last race being the, the great two Nikkei show, which is that, you know, distance a little over, uh, I think it was a mile and nine sixteenth that day at Nakayama. Uh, he went to the front, which is kind of his usual, you know, he doesn't have to go to the lead, but that's kind of his usual forte, if you will. Uh, pardon the pundit. Um, and then uh, he won the race by eight lengths. So he, he decimated that field that day. So if anything, that showed to me that, you know, the, the old title holder is back. Um, you know, there are other horses in here that uh, I think there's a look, you know, you can look at uh, Ask Victor Moore, who's you know one of the last sons of Deep Impact that we'll see on the track in Japan. Uh, he won the Saint Leger last or Saint Leger last year uh, at Hanshin, so he's one that I can I can think that you know has a uh, a shot in here as a four year old. You know his return race was also in that Nikkei show against Title Holder. He finished ninth that day, so not sure if you know just again it kind of he has that kind of shaky form, uh, but could be one at a price. But what I'm really looking at is the is Bull, Bulldog Haas. Uh, this is a horse who finished second last year and behind uh, Equinox uh, in the Arena Keenan, which is the end of year Grand Prix at uh, Mile and uh, Nine Sixteenths. And then he came back in, in his you know start of the year campaign in the Hanshin Daisholten at at uh, you know a little shorter than this at at, at three thousand meters and finished a respectable second th- second behind uh, Justin Palace, who's also in here and also was a good contender. So. You know, I think of all the horses, I probably look at, at Bulldog Haas just because, you know, he, he kind of had that Equinox form. He did finish second to Ask Victor Moore. Um, so I think, you know, kind of, in my opinion, those are the four that I would really be looking at and kind of keying things around. Title Holder, who I think is the real deal and, and probably would beat this field on Saturday. So, you know, again, Title Holder, Justin Palace, uh, Ask Victor Moore. And, and again, my, my selection will probably be, I'll probably lean towards Bulldog Haas as a bit of a price behind uh, Title Holder. Justin Palace, very strong in the market behind title yes. holder at the kind of numbers. Uh, if if the current pricing was to hold up, would that be too short on Justin Palace for you, or, or do you see him and and title holder a, a, as close as the market right now has them? Yeah, I, you know, again, I, I think the big thing with Justin Palace is the fact that he has Lamar aboard. Um, right. So you know, in, in, in terms of that too, is that the draw did no favors to. Uh, you know, some of that, some of the, the bullet Haas had a pretty bad draw in terms of uh, 13 out there. You also have, you know, another older horse that people may be familiar with in the, in the form of Silver Sonic, who had that winning effort in Saudi Arabia uh, and then that, you know, distance race out there. So, you know, Justin Palace drew the one, title holder drew the three, and then Ask Victor Moore drew the six. So I think for me, those are the, you know, those are the three that really had the, the best draw, draws of the race in here. Uh, again, not saying any other horse can't win in here, but you know those, that's why I believe Justin Palace has the better odds or you know favoritism over Bulldog Haas is just because of the draw. Well, maybe some value in D- Bulldog Haas's direction. Then, funny moment in the video I posted yesterday on YouTube with Randy Moss and Jerry Bailey, with uh, Jerry Bailey basically just talking to the camera and addressing uh, Lemare and and giving some advice. For the for the derby, well, I think we're gonna have to clip that out for social and send it around. I'll, I'll tag you on it. Maybe we can get it in front of him. I, I don't know if uh, Christoph would be amenable to that, but I mean, if you're gonna take advice about uh, winning a giant international race, you could probably do worse than listening to Jerry Bailey. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Who's Jerry Bailey? He's probably he's, he's some schlep, isn't he? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna tell him you said that, class. I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Jerry, I, I, Jerry Bailey, one one of the greatest jockeys ever to ever ride here in North America in the world. So yeah, that's uh, again, and, and Lemare's no slouch. So yeah, they're, they're two. Oh, I mean, he's he's, he's, the, yeah, he's re- regarded by many as the best in the world, and this is a a different type of deal. It's just an interesting situation he's in, where you know, I think for those of us who want to see Derma do well, we want to see him. We want to see him not do exactly what happened last year, but we also don't want to see him overcorrect and 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 grab. So it's it's uh it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. We'll have more updates on the Japanese 
contingent. Uh, got Michael Adolfson back for a show we're going to do on Sunday. I'm sure we'll talk about it then. We'll be covering them on the Monster Pods that are dropping next week as well. So lots of good stuff coming up as far as that goes. And Klaus, hopefully we'll check in with you one more time before the big dance, whether it's me or uh, Spencer in the chair for our uh, simulcast edition next week. Because there is JRA action next Saturday as well. Chance to, to get out after the Derby? Yeah, we, we keep going for a little while here now. So yeah, certainly lots Thanks. of opportunities. Love it. All right, my man. We'll be talking soon. Thanks, Pete.